Hello, and welcome back. Migo, Mio Garita time, baby. Mio Garita time. Boys, girls, and uppies, welcome back to the Judgiest Place on the Internet. My name is Josh. My name is Rick. My name is Christian. And we are the, the Judges, the, the fastest podcast, podcast tonight. On the internet. This no. side of the Mississippi. That's right. And we're on the middle of the Mississippi. On a steamboat, baby. I like to play both sides of the Mississippi. A little that Huckleberry Finn style. You little fence sitter. I'm not anything like Huckleberry Finn, Erica. Hmm. I was talking about being in the middle of the Mississippi. Huckleberry Finn style. I don't, I don't paint that, fences. Whitewashing fences, I'm not, fucker. I'm not doing any of that. No, I, th- I believe it was the Mississippi. No, no, no. Was it Huck Finn or was it Tom Sawyer? Um... I am a modern day Tom Sawyer. I will Real say that. Mean, mean guy. I think it was Huck Finn. I think it was Huck Finn. I don't I'm, think I read Tom Sawyer. I'm more of a Tuck <laughs> Everlasting kind of guy. <gasps> Love Tuck Everlasting. It's so good. Yeah. Is there a movie? Yes. I've never seen the movie. I don't There's think. a book of Tuck Everlasting. Right. That was the original medium. Huh. I didn't know that either. I read it in fifth grade. Loved it. Whoa. Oh, advanced the reader here. The movie's great. It's such a good. If you don't know, the. the Moral of the story of Tuck Everlasting is do it while you can because you don't live forever. Whoa. Spoiler. You should watch the movie. It's I a should. classic. I feel, I feel, that feels like one of those movies that just like has a young Leonardo DiCaprio in it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Wait, does it? I'm pretty sure. Whoa. It felt like it. Josh is... It felt like it. Leo senses were going on. Or maybe a small Matt Damon. A small Matt Damon. Yeah. Back when oh, him and just kidding. It ben Affleck showed up and everything together. It is neither uh, any of the people you said. It is Ben Kingsley. I love Ben Kingsley. I've been on my Kingsley shit. And Alexis actually. Bledel and Sissy Spacek and Jonathan Jackson and William Hurt. That hurt. Talk Everlasting is so good. We should watch that together. You know what also is good, Erica, is when we get listeners sent in mail... And they send it into P.O. Box 58, Ottawa, Illinois, 61350. And then we open it up on the podcast, kind of like we're doing right now. Aw. First is... letter. Christian. First. This is a save the date. <laughs> you got to read it faster than that. <laughs> From Alan and Athena, and they're getting married in Louisville, Ohio. Alan and Athena. Athena is a really pretty name. And also, like, strong. Strong. Smart. Wise. Yeah, wise. Godly. This Have is, you thought about getting a helmet? That's a very cute picture. I like that a lot. Look at that. That's that so a cute. cute picture. Congratulations in September. We'll be there. <laughs> we won't. I can't promise that. We actually will be in Ohio for a wedding in September. Ohio. Not yours, though. Ohio. Ohio. Not right. mine? Not yours, You're not either. coming to my wedding? We double booked it. So sorry, dude. <laughs> you didn't we invite forgot. us, actually. It's in the mail. That was it. I love the stationery. Aurora and I have stage names. We're Athena and Alan. <laughs> <laughs> How do you recommend roll Christmas and possibly Josh? I loved that. I hated that. You can use my name. Thank my you. My name is Morgan, and I found your show recently. Welcome, Morgan. I absolutely Morgan. love your guys' friendship and all of your wonderful jokes. Thank you. That's this the is, most important part. This is such a sweet letter. I'm, I'm obsessed with this. It's always great to listen as a new episode comes out, and you guys provide me company while I mind-numbingly crank out college assignments as I work towards that degree. It's not where I thought you were going with that. They did have insert air horns there. I have some mind-boggling they do. Story. He's not lying. It really does say that. So, hey, if you're sending in mail and you want sound effects, make sure to have it oh, in there. Man. Have it at the top of the letter. <laughs> Put it at the top. You can use my sound effects. <laughs> I have some mind-boggling stories I can send your way if you wish to read them on the pod. One yes, is about it. an ex-friend who sent menacing anonymous letters to her boyfriend's parents. The other is about how my school played a video of my <laughs> abuser discussing his abuse and everyone that knew what happened. That's insane. Uh... Yeah, that's absolutely insane. That's horrible. That's the worst idea I've ever heard. Anyway, you guys are absolutely amazing, and I enjoy the content. Keep up the good work, Morgan. Thank you, Morgan. Thanks, Morgan. On beautiful stationery. Now we're doxing her. Is that Morgan or Norgan? It's an M. I mean, it's... I don't want to talk about it. (laughs) It's an M, Josh. An M for mind your business. Speaking of my business, you want to hear about what I did today? Yes. Yeah, I bet it's an action-packed day. We drove to fucking 
Dixon. Dixon, okay. Illinois. Okay. That's far. It is far. I've never been there probably since high school. Did you get the Thai, thai place? No, we didn't get any food. food. What? We, we drove there and then we went to the like little rich section of Dixon because we were getting a lamp from Facebook. Okay. Okay. And uh, really pretty over there, yeah. right on the river. Yeah. River was very high because it's been flooding recently. Mm-hmm. Really beautiful dam they got there. Yeah, it's like yeah. a surprisingly yeah. beautiful Yeah, I've never been past town. the Dixon Arch. Okay. Oh. And if you're not aware, Dixon is the childhood home of President Ronald Reagan. So did you piss on the ground? Yeah, and it trickled right on down. <laughs> yeah. And there, it's really funny. There, they had a, a Hardee's there, and it said, oh, it was like flame broiled thick burger was like what was on the thing. It's like, there's no way our Hardee's is calling their shit a thick burger. Literally forever. Really? really? Yeah. I'm more of a Carl's Jr. fellow. I don't know the last time I've been to a Not Hardee's. Not on this side of the Mississippi, you aren't. Uh, I don't know when the last time I've been to a Hardee's was. Oh, there's one in Ottawa. Yeah, I never went there. I went there once. That was the last time I went. The Hardee's is garbage, but the one in Dixon's pretty good. Yeah. I just thought reading, I couldn't imagine, like, well, I'm in the mood for a thick burger, you know? They're pretty good. I guess thick burger is just a synonym for Whopper or Big Mac, <laughs> but thick burger sounds bad. Yeah, I think they're just trying to skirt around. They're like, everybody's already used weight metrics. We've already gone through all that. Well, I don't know. What other dimension can we use? And it's like, thick. I thick. guess thick. This they were ahead of their time. This is a girth patty. We got a wide burger. It's so, We got a, a <laughs> six inch wide burger. That's really wide for a burger nowadays, guys. There's a local place to us. It's just a bar and grill. Dive bar. Great place to shoot darts. Mm. And they've got, is it a half pound burger? Oh my god! Yeah, I think we've discussed maybe a long time ago. Talked about it. It's really good, but it's it's so good, disgusting. It's ginormous. That's a thick burger. I think it's a pound. It's uh, yeah, it's a half pound of burger. So it's like two patties, two quarter pounder patties, then a half pound of bacon, and like twelve pieces of cheese or something. And jalapenos, I think it's it's insane. It's yeah, I've only had it once, and it's like that'll do. And it's pretty cheap for yeah, it's like seven bucks. Yeah, Yeah. that place is insanely cheap for how good it is and how much food you get. Anyway, we don't just gib gab on this on this podcast. We uh, I want to know what happened with the lamp. Oh, it's really cool lamp. It's like a modern. It's like a not vintage Tiffany lamp. It's just like a recreation. But Aurora wants it for a craft room, so <laughs> got to oblige. Got to give Is the missus floor lamp or a table lamp. A floor lamp, Ooh. yeah. And it's got like birds and like vine. You guys can see it when you go downstairs, but it's got like the stained glass. Yeah, you know, but yada yada yada. Very cool. Very cool. And Tiffany made it. You said no. No, oh. it's like Tiffany style. Like when you say oh, when so somebody says a Tiffany lamp, do you yeah, know? Yeah, I know. It's basically just a stained glass lampshade. I obviously knew that. Usually it's like nature designs. Um, also, I would say interesting, but I already knew that. Also mm. saw... That was for the listeners. Saw a YWCA in Dixon. I don't know what that is. It's a, instead of a YMCA, like Young Men C Association. Association. It was a Christian. Young Women C Association. Hmm. And I had Christian. never even heard of it. Hmm. Uh, and like I understand why, because the... Why yeah, w, w? How do you do a W with your? Yeah, how do you separate? How do you separate a, a <laughs> Y from, from a, a w? w? This. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. I would just, say that. Y W C A. It yeah. just doesn't. There's too many syllables. But now we understand why the village people didn't want to do the song. Yeah. But we don't just talk about the village people on this podcast. We don't just gib gab either. We don't just gib gab. We also jib jab, and what that entails is us going online and finding silly little stories. Christian did that. Oh, he's wearing boy, b- blue boy, blue boy, l- blue boy uh, bracelet. <laughs> I thought Were we would all bring our stroke. I thought we'd all wear our friendship bracelets. I guess we we're. I was wrong. Mine's right you there. Should have reminded me. I didn't think to grab mine. I just. I thought maybe we were feeling friendly today after the last week's episode. I was a little heated. This is. This might be the tightest we've recorded episodes in a while. Yeah, because we we recorded last night. And we're recording two tonight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One of them will be a bonus episode on patreon.com slash judges pod. Five dollars gets you a bonus episode a month. And access to the Discord. And, and add free episodes. episodes. This story was sent to us by Julie. Andrews. Mm-mm. Fuck. You're pretty close. Um she writes all this on 
she saw this Am I the Asshole post and screenshotted it so quick. She loves the pod and it helps me get through long drives in the work days. Don't you hate when you screenshot too quick and there's still a motion blur on it? Oh, fuck. I hate so that. So annoying. What I really hate is when I screenshot and I like forgot because you know I'm a zoomer, so I have to have multiple in like multiple huh? content going on at once. So yeah. I have a boomer. Yes, yeah, boomer. I'm a I'm a boomer, but there's a silent Z in it also, <laughs> and I have to I can't be left with my own thoughts. So I have to have something going on in the background. So anytime I take a screenshot, I go, oh no, my my picture and picture YouTube picture videos in the bottom corner. Everybody's gonna know I'm watching. Mm-hmm. The complete lore of Bionicles. Yeah, I hate whenever I go to screenshot something and it's got the six-hour video of why Riku is gay and or Riku is gay Game and why it's matters. important. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. six-hour video. I went to go f- try to find the story. It's already been deleted. So good job, Julie. You're smart. Am I the asshole for allowing my girlfriend to move into my house even though my daughter doesn't like her? I just got this one sent to me too. So I've been with my girlfriend Alexis. 28 for about a year bad name sorry alexis if you're listening bad name we got a lot of bad negative associations with the name alexis really i don't name two i worked with somebody named alexis and on multiple occasions just a bad person to work with okay i met her online on a dating website a couple of months after my late wife passed away a couple Sorry of months is, seems. I mean, I guess. What you if guys she was dying it. for a long time? I was gonna say, and they could have discussed it. I get that. Yeah, you're already over it. <laughs> you're just waiting for her to kick the bucket. Oh my god! What if? Oh my god! Yes. I don't want to tell my daughter Anna, twenty, about her until I felt my relationship with Alexis was something serious, and that took about six months to happen. This man only lives in six month intervals. Yeah. <laughs> The day I decided to pull Anna aside and tell her that I was seeing someone, I could see her face drop. I immediately let her know that Alexis wasn't a replacement for her her mother and that she didn't have to meet her until she felt like it was ready. She told me, as long as I'm happy, she's happy, and left it at that. So I took her for her word. Well, they ended up having to meet not too long after this because Alexis was going through some financial issues and was going to be evicted from her apartment. Hate so, that. Hate landlords. Can we, we say do that? Hate landlords. Regardless of the rest of the story, fuck that shit. Yeah. Um, I told her that she could live with me until she could find another place. When I told my daughter about this, that Alexis was going to live with us temporarily, uh, I had explained that she's going through some financial woes, and she told me that she thinks Alexis is a gold digger and that mm. she just doesn't trust her. I wonder where we don't have a lot of back story on where that comes in Mm -mm. yeah there must be something this guy's not telling us i also feel like when you're in a relationship it's never oh i'm just gonna move in temporarily no at that point yeah i agree there's no like i'm gonna move in for six months and then i'll move out i'll move right back out (laughs) right (laughs) because at that point like if you are moving out it's over it's not gonna work for you guys very astute observation guys um, this pissed me off because Alexis isn't that type of person. I've known her for six months. I think I know oh, my girlfriend. Year. Oh shit, you're right. I told her that I was sorry that she felt Wait, that no, way. Wait, no, 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 no. Met six months, took him six months to tell her. So it has only been six months, my bad. Very astute observation, Christian. <laughs> I have high passive perception. <laughs> that was all, you can't make a reference Fuck, that wasn't on the record. Was- Editor, cut that shit out. I'm <laughs> going to be embarrassed. Uh, <laughs> where did I leave off now? A student observation. That pissed me off because <laughs> Alexis isn't that type of person. I told her I was sorry that she felt that way, but that I couldn't just allow Alexis to be homeless in the streets. And that if she didn't want to be in the same room as Alexis for a little while, well, she could just move out then. Wait. Same room. They have we- to share a room. Just- yeah. That... Th- Share a bedroom? I don't know. I mean, maybe that's... He just has... The sentence here says, if she didn't want to be in the same room as Alexis for a little while, she could just move out. So he's evicting his daughter. (laughs) Essentially, that's what it sounds like. She stormed up to her room. Soon to be Alexis's, maybe. (laughs) Uh, Can't interrupt the man cave. (laughs) He still has, like, 
uh, this, like it's like the Maud Flanders like a hole in the bed sheet from uh, oh. his dead wife. He's like, well, Alexis can't go here. It has to go in the other bedroom. Uh, she's thrown up to her room after that and didn't speak to me for the rest of the day. The next day, Anna told me she was moving out as I had disrespected her and her mother by having another woman woman move in, not even a year after she passed away. I agree. Mm. It's definitely bold. It's that's something. Yeah, bold, brash, a... brazen, brave. Mm. <laughs> Beautiful in a way. Mm-mm. Brilliant. Brilliant. Where's my carrot? Fucking dumb. Um, behind me. Another beat. I apologized to Anna and told her I didn't mean what I had said the other day, but she told me that she didn't want to hear it and that she wasn't going to change her mind. And she's already let her grandparents know what was going on. Tales Narc. Now. Yeah, fucking tails. Yeah, come on. Anna moved out a few days after that, and Alexis moved in with me. My relationship with my daughter has suffered drastically, and I haven't spoken to her for a good while now. I understand I may have been in the wrong because I told my daughter she didn't have to meet my girlfriend until she felt like she was ready to. Yeah. But at the same time, because my girlfriend was being evicted and may have potentially been homeless, I felt I was justified in allowing her to temporarily stay with me until it's she not... could find another place to live. Oh, my God. So I'm trying to see whether I was truly in the wrong, breaking my promises to Anna, since if not, Alexis would be homeless right now. So am I the asshole? I think there was no, there's, I think you're not an asshole for like literally just being like the person I'm seeing is going to be without a place. Uh, you know, let me do what I can to help her. But like, you also can't be upset that your, that your, uh, daughter is having that reaction yeah that's a perfectly normal reaction to have yeah. especially i really don't think that he should have been like well if you don't like it you can leave like no this is her home too yeah. like this is there should have been a better negotiation yeah of like maybe she'll be here on wednesdays and thursdays you'll be here the other days oh. fine you guys don't <laughs> have to share the same room <laughs> jesus <laughs> You okay. can sleep on the floor. If this guy's fine. rolling in it, then he could just buy her a new house. That's what I was thinking too. Like maybe they, he could have just like helped her pay that month's rent or yeah. something until she got back on her feet. Yeah, there's definitely something being left out, either knowingly or unknowingly, from the dad's side, where it's like, yeah, like I mean, landlords are pieces of shit, but just to be like conveniently, quote unquote, being evicted out of quote unquote nowhere, like. Mm-hmm. There's definitely, there might be something fishy going on. There's eviction laws. You can't just, like, have that happen. So either she was already backed up or, yeah. like, why can't you just pay rent for a month, like you're saying? Yeah. Hmm. 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 Good story. I, it was. That's why I wrote it. You wrote it? No. How amazing would that have been, though? I mean, I would have been disappointed. It was made up. It's fiction. You idiots, you fall for that? You thought that was real life? People don't actually get evicted. Landlords are chill as fuck. Landlords are the good guys. You're the bad guy for not paying on time, guys. Erica, how many how many months after Christian kicks it are you are you hopping on a date? Oh, immediately. (laughs) At the funeral, I'm swiping. (laughs) That makes sense. Yeah. But you don't announce it. You don't tell Olsen. Immediately, that's fucked. But if you're just if you're just hooking up at the funeral, that's cool. That's like soap opera shit. It's mainly that is some soap opera shit. It is. No, I will be celibate the rest of my life. Really? No. You're gonna celebrate (laughs) the rest of your life. (laughs) You're gonna celebrate. (laughs) No. (laughs) No. I don't think I will ever love another man. I'm an incel. I'm an involuntary celebrator <laughs> very nice how many months christian after she kicks the bucket he will be celibate the Fuck. rest of his life i will be an incel because i don't know how to talk to people i would you say this yeah, but, but you you're do but i'm what you're a celebrity you're an involuntary I'm celebrity one. yeah i'm a vol cell <laughs> i didn't like that <laughs> I don't think Christian will ever know, love another man either. So, yeah, I don't know. That is a weird thing to think. It would have to be a long time, like at least seven months, at least. No. And also the fact, like, I cry so easily. It's like anytime I would talk to like another person intimately, I just be like, 
Oh my god. Well, it's, I just miss Eric. <laughs> I mean, cry all you, time. You, you guys haven't been on a, in the dating thing in a while, but as soon as you get hit with thank the thank God, am I right? As soon as you get hit I, with the thank God, yeah, I would, I'd be drowning over here. What happened with your last relationship? It's like ah, they died. <laughs> <laughs> we were together for fourteen years and they died. Fourteen years? That's all you're giving me? I'm gonna die next year. Daddy needs life insurance. He's the one with the policy. He shares. We're I, only on get, I only get like a thousand dollars if she dies. That's a lot of money. That's no, a, it's not. That's a, if you put it all on black. Oh, hold up, hold up. Josh is making some points here. Now you got now you got nineteen hundred dollars, and you put it all on black again. Now you got zero dollars. <sighs> He's speaking some facts over here. How long would you wait? That's uh, an impossible question. It was very clearly me just probing and being silly. No, I want to know. Hmm. There's only one correct answer here. A lifetime. Correct. Till the moment. death of the sun. Our sun? The sun. Oh. Lord Jesus Christ. This next story comes from Cameron. Cole Cameron? Cameron Close. Cole. Ah. I know it. I know y'all love some bad house guest stories, so here y'all go. <sighs> that stresses me out. Am I the asshole for putting parental controls on my TV and royally pissing off my father-in-law? Royally? Royally. Okay. Royalty-free, pissing off my father-in-law. You, that's the best kind. I, 30 male, live with my wife. 30 male. My wife. And we have two kids. One just moved out. No, they're only she eight didn't, and six. She didn't like my new wife. My wife's parents are staying with us temporarily. Wait, how old is he? He's 30. Why did I hear 40? She's 40. She's also 30. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I heard 45, and I was like, 45 with an eight-year-old, that's a late baby, which is fine. Just, yeah. It was just an observation. Astute. Well. Observation, if you would. That's, I wouldn't. How old my parents would have been when I was eight? So Ooh. thanks. I'm. It's just not. No thanks. What do you think the average parent age of first child is? Uh, it's like thirty. Is thirty-two. It that, is it getting up there now? Yeah, that makes sense. It does make sense. Hear you know, that, mom? We live in a society now where you have to fucking grind. You don't have any fucking disposable income, and you feel unsecure at all times. Yeah. Fuck the buzzing did happen. My wife's parents are staying with us, with us temporarily as their home is having some serious repairs after a freak accident. Gold diggers. It wasn't their fault, and luckily they had insurance. Uh, so the repairs should be completed in two months from now. Hmm. Good luck. I don't really get along with my in-laws, especially my father-in-law, but I agreed to let them stay because I thought the time would fly by and it wouldn't be that bad. But I'm posting here because I guess I was wrong. Hmm. My mother-in-law doesn't have a job, and my father-in-law works late shifts and doesn't get off until around 11 p.m. When he gets home, they'll watch YouTube in our living room and play music <laughs> on a, at a loud volume with our speaker system. <laughs> this isn't a college house party base tearing apart the walls, but it's still loud. It's even worse that it's apparent. Yeah. Like, no matter what your parents listen to, it gets annoying. Yeah. Fuck. Is that really? what parents think about kids? No. Not Wilson's our kid. not gonna like our music? Not our kid. We're gonna be he's gonna be cool. We're gonna raise him to be cool. He already is cool. I got him smoking six. I got him blasting Blast darts. And My kids are not light sleepers by any means, but this wakes them up. And then they go wake me up because they want me to make it stop. My kids need to be rested for school and I need to get up in the morning to drop them off and go to work. Mm -hmm. My wife works the overnight shift so she doesn't witness any of this i've tried talking to my in-laws about it and asked that they please keep the noise down after my kids bedtime which is at 8 30 p.m i don't expect them to be completely silent but i don't think they need to be having the tv that loud on at night 11 post 11 p.m loud tv is insane pretty wild mm -hmm. my father-in-law argued with me and said that he doesn't finish work till 11 so i'm basically basically expecting him to not do things and to not enjoy himself after work. I told him he can do it before work or on his days off, or if it's 
Oh. I told him he can do it before work or on his days off, or it's tough shit. Eat oh, shit, Frank. Okay. There's also the option of, like, headphones. That's, I feel like that's the perfect solution here, right? Yeah. Uh, he complained to my wife, who's now taking his side and saying that the kids need to learn how to sleep through a bit of everyday noise. That's insane. That is insane. Yeah. That you're ta- saying a 12-year-old to put up with midnight. I would be started taking just, fucking videos and be like, listen, how loud this shit just is. Just the SNL YouTube outro oh, trumpets blaring. <laughs> just bim, 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 I told her it's not everyday noise and that he and her um, our mother-in-law are being excessively noisy and inconsiderate. She's just not there to see it. My father-in-law has been sending me links to buy earplugs for the kids. Just buy headphones, headphones. for yourself. It's the same but opposite. <laughs> I've gotten really fed up with this. It's not my in-law's house, and they're staying with us as guests. I think they're being really selfish about this. I decided to put parental controls on the TV so that my in-laws can't use it after 8.30 p.m. until 6 a.m. the next day. That's pretty funny. Between those times, the TV can't be used without putting in the password, and only I know the password. This doesn't affect my wife as she doesn't get off work until 6 a.m. and isn't normally home until around 6.30. My father-in-law is now incredibly pissed off with me and said that I'm acting like a child and keeps pestering me, demanding that I give him the password. My wife is also mad at me for upsetting her father. But I'm just so annoyed at this whole situation and I'm sick of hearing about it. So I just want to know if I'm morally in the clear here. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. A little, little petty, but I mean, like, what are you gonna do? Honestly, yeah. Like, how many, how many times can you talk to him? And it sounds like they're. He is so fucking stubborn about it. Like, yeah. yeah. Just get I, headphones. I just don't know how. As a grandparent, you already went through this with kids one time. It's like, mm-hmm. how are you? Like, oh, they just need to learn to deal with it. And it's like, are you? Do you have like hearing loss and you don't realize how loud your fucking videos are? I mean, my yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I definitely feel, I mean, it's, I feel like it's the, the classic old person take of like, well, I shared a room with three siblings and they were always loud. So you guys can put up with it. Like, this isn't that bad. Like that kind of, that kind of, that kind of, yeah, that kind of. Mm-hmm. Also, why don't maybe you just fucking blast music when he's trying to take a nap? True. If you want to be real petty about it. Just you start, fu- just set like a, a alarm on your TV to start playing music at like 4 a.m. Mm. Just piss him off. Like, oh, well, the kids need to watch their freaking Looney Tunes in the morning. I'm just getting it warmed up. That's so but embarrassing that you think the- kids are still watching Loon- Looney Tunes nowadays. Well, it's, they it don't. already came back and got recanceled, Josh. That would, if it was at 4 a.m., then the kids would still wake up to it. And then it's yeah, not but they love anything. Looney Tunes. They're pretty upset that it came back and got canceled. Got it. That's yeah. fucked, honestly. <laughs> it's a classic. <laughs> Fuck you, Warner Brothers. They really enjoyed Space Jam, too, is the thing. Mm. Yeah. They only liked it for LeBron James. Yeah. I mean, what are you going to do about that? What are you going to do about that? I, I'll tell you about it on the break. Two months is so long, though. But this break is shorter. Two months putting up with that bullshit, like it's not, it's too long of a time. To just be like, let's just bite our tongue and just get through it. Yeah, it's only two months. You can't say it's only two months. It's oh, we got another fucking two months of this bullshit. I want to know how far into it they are before this like became a thing. Like, was this like week one, <laughs> day three, or is it like, all right, we're like four weeks in, we're halfway there. Yeah, and then I could see, if halfway there is not far enough if there was like two weeks left and then it's like your dad keeps playing the fucking tv louder and louder and then the wife's like it'll be fine it's just yeah, two yeah. weeks i'm like maybe then but two months of this like blasting tv it's like oh two and a half men reruns men 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 you don't know the theme song. I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On this half of the podcast, we don't 
just podcast. We also podcast. Huh. And what, what that entails f- is this. I didn't know we did what that. What the frick? Doing silly little things on this. This thing we do. It's just us being idiots. It's kind of the whole show, to be honest. What? Huh? Just on your episodes. What? Wait. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> now I get why you're celebrating. Celebrate. Did you just do the <laughs> Christian stare? <laughs> you just ripped his bit in front of him. You just absolutely ate his fucking bit. You just bit. stole my bit. <laughs> What'd you do? Let me see the look. It was very it was very <laughs> like, you it? discernibly Christian stare. <laughs> it wasn't like Erica trying to be like, hmm. it was just like that was a Christian <laughs> stare. <laughs> Have you noticed we've been doing that more often? That yeah. I've been doing it? Well, he called us out last night for like you guys smile loud, and it's because you copied my same awkward smile that makes this loud noise. <laughs> <laughs> For this week's Circle George, let's get us back on track. Let's calm down. Let's get focused. Let's get sharp. I feel like you should maybe talk like that some more. I liked it. <laughs> Use your dad voice. Yell at me. <laughs> <laughs> she get electrocuted in Looney Tunes? We're bringing back a classic. Okay. All-time favorite. Shitty conspiracy theories with Christian. Get on the tinfoil hats. Huzzah! I actually have some. Yeah, I'll block, I'll block the, the mind-scanning rays of the I government. I can still hear it. Louder, actually, than normal. Agreed. Editor, can you edit in a tinfoil hat on Joshua when he says, I'm going? Yeah, here. editor sure can put a tinfoil <laughs> hat on be, Joshua. It's going to be so gold. <laughs> it's going to be the goldest Ooh, tinfoil hat. Lo- Ooh, this luster. <laughs> it's going to be a gold foil hat. You might be able to do it with a tinfoil hat because of the, the properties sheen. of yeah. the image already. Men, <laughs> men. <laughs> Editor first, cut all of this out. What? <laughs> first I, conspiracy. Editor what? Tell the editor what you wanted to tell him. Have Give fun it. editing out all this static. No one can hear the sack but you fuckers. I oh, hope so. <laughs> JFK was assassinated for posting cringe on Maine. Okay. No Illuminati. Mm. No Soviets, no CIA. He's just simply posted cringe. What was his cringe? <laughs> oh, they don't want you to know that. That's been buried. What's it? What was JFK redacted? What was JFK's like? Like I know people liked him as a president. What was his like was calling card as a president? Civil rights Being movement? hot. I think he was. Did Being he do Catholic stuff? Catholic and hot. I'm pretty. Sure. Bagging Marilyn Monroe. Catholic and hot. Cheating on Jackie Kennedy. Yeah. I was he president? What's that? What Moon? year did he get shot for posting cringe? Was it six? As president, he fought to ensure equal rights and opportunities for all Americans. He encouraged Americans to lift up those less fortunate than themselves, moon. both at home and abroad. And he challenged the nation Bay to reach pigs. for the impossible and land on the Cuban moon. Did he do the Cuban Missile Crisis? I think so. Right? Okay, mm-hmm. that's pretty cringe. That's pretty cringe of him to have done that, actually. You faked a a missile crisis and you still goofed it up? He did the Red Scare shit, I bet. How about this one? Did they they not elaborate what cringe he posted? No. Okay. I think that's a shitty conspiracy theory if we don't have some... Uh, Yeah, what do you... These are all bad conspiracy theories. Uh, Auntie Anne's in Cinnabon... No Only way, right? Only exists to collect There's data no on no way consumers. he pronounced both of those wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Auntie Anne's in Cinnabon? <laughs> There's no way. Where have you even heard I've Cinnabon? Been, I've never been to either. You've been to Taco Bell? <laughs> what does that mean? They have Cinnabon Bites for breakfast. Cinnabon, not Cinnabon. It's not even spelled. I'm talking about the Pokemon City. <laughs> Cinnabar? Fuck! And what is the other one? Auntie Anne's. That's just because we're from the Midwest. No, it's because it's an alliteration with Auntie Anne. Actually, it is an assimilation. That's not what it was. An ass <laughs> assonance. An, an, as, I'm going to make a real ass out of you. <laughs> she asked my aunt. So you think it's Auntie Anne's? Yeah. 
What about the rest of the country that says aunt instead of aunt? They're idiots. Fair enough. They only exist to collect to collect uh, data on consumers. Huh? You can extrapolate a lot about all the states of the economics and specific regions at specific points by just looking at their sale numbers. Perhaps it could be a kind of canary in the coal mine situation. Is this um, because they exist in malls? Yeah, in airports and like it's it, in it, Taco Bells. In Taco Bells, yeah, it tells you a lot. That's just, that's just. If the if the economy is going downward, people start buying less snack foods, especially pretzels and Cinnabon. That's because they're fucking expensive. They're so good though. They're very good. I I don't think I've ever had an Auntie Anne's pretzel. I'm more of a Ditto's gal, but Cinnabon. I mean, I'm a, I'm a fucking sucker for a good Bavarian pretzel. I do uh, like a pretzel. We just had this conversation in the Discord. Uh, I think, I think Zap just went uh, to Taco Bell and was like excited because they were gonna get the the uh, Cinnabon bites. Mm-hmm. And then it's like in America, you can only get two or twelve. <laughs> And two is like you maybe want a couple more, and twelve is way so too many. Way too many. Yeah. But two to get like, and in Canada, I guess they sell them in packs of four, which is like wow. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. And it was like three dollars for four of them. Okay. And in America, if you wanted to get four, it was six dollars. But if you got twelve, it was like seven fifty. <laughs> McDonald's has started doing that shit. Have you noticed that McDonald's will have like the two for two? If you get a hash brown, dollar ninety nine. You want two hash browns? Two dollars, baby. And guess what? Now I got to spend a penny to get the extra hash brown because I feel like I'm losing out. I don't need the extra 600 calories or whatever the fuck is in a McDonald's hash brown. I do. Yeah, she does. Well, because I'm breastfeeding. But here's the the other problem. It's because I'm already getting a breakfast meal for McDonald's. So I already have one hash brown. The problem is now I've got three three hash hash browns. browns. I'm I'm fine fine with with two two hash hash browns. browns. Yeah, that makes sense. He's you've already ranted about this on this podcast before. You're getting you're getting stuck Lamb in a circle. Bastard. This takes me to my next point. McDonald's has shrunk the size of the M on their fry box, so we don't realize the size of the fry box also shrinking. Ooh. What the, what freaking what does it freaking matter what the size of the box is? Because they never fucking fill it all the way up anyway. Also, the ratio would be the one that's more concerning. What do you mean the ratio? Like if you noticed, like if you just shrunk it all, I wouldn't think it would be that much smaller no it's because the m is so it stands out so much you go what the fuck and you don't pay attention to the red box <laughs> why did you enunciate so much on what the fuck it's the, mo- it's the, it's clear- the only thing i was ever taught <laughs> it's the clearest i've ever heard you speak erica is correct <laughs> christian do we need to add in the paper the mcdonald's straw theory we can add in the McDonald's straw theory. What's the McDonald's straw theory? I have you not. I have a full pin board at home about it. <laughs> During COVID, it, this was at the beginning of shrinkflation. It's going on. Just pay attention, people. Open your eyes. Quit sleeping, you sheeple. Um, they started, you know, shrinkflation. They first, before they even shrunk the size of the sodas for McDonald's. There's a oopsies on logistics here or something. They shrunk down the size of the straws, mm-hmm. but not the size of the straw paper. So there would be all this extra room in the straw where there's just empty paper. And you're like, that's gross. Yeah. You never realized the flappy straws you were getting for a while during COVID? No. And then yeah, this you go, is how it's like, you get duped by the government. It's when you go to put you go to put the straw in and it's like barely out the top and yeah. you're like <laughs> Yeah. I can't and, get it all. Yeah. I hate that. And now we they've shrunk the size of all of their drinks. So so now the straw seems normal. This is the same thing with the M on the fry box. That's all I'm saying, And people. they started charging more for sodas. That, that's 25 cents for a large. And, well, an extra 25 cents for the large. Yeah, it's a dollar. It's a dollar 59, I think, for a large drink. It used to be a dollar. And they still... They still have the fucking audacity to be like dollar size soft drink on, and they don't say any size. They because yeah. it's a dollar for a small. And then also their meals used to come with a large, and now they only come with a medium. And then it's like, but also sometimes they just randomly give you a large and they upcharge you without telling you. Yep. And you look at the bill and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> I got a lot to say about McDonald's. What? I have a lot to say about what the fuck. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I'm off track here, I feel like. What's up with gas not smelling as much as it used to? 
interesting. I don't mm. get gas that much. Uh, one, because I quit my job, but also I have a hybrid. So yeah. I can't really collaborate Here's, or have any astute observations I in this. I also can't collaborate because I am a woman and I don't pump my own gas. That's very true. Damn, we live in a patriarchy. Um, I'm just kidding. I, I do pump my own gas sometimes. I can't tell if it's just because it's winter, so like you know, the smells aren't as pungent. Winter smell more. Def- really? You can smell no. KFC from like seven blocks away in the winter. Um, but yeah, so I th- here's specifically why I think it gas yeah, smells more in the summer because it's the fumes you're smelling. It's not the actual liquid that smells. It's so it's the hot. Fumes, so it's yeah. hotter. So there's more fumes. Gas isn't a liquid. All, it's a gas. All smells are. In a gaseous form. <sighs> um, uh, Eric, I'm gonna fuck. You. Am <laughs> I wrong? The, I don't know. There, yes. It's specifically the fumes that are coming off of it because it's hotter, though. And what I'm saying is, in the winter, there's less humidity, so it smells travel, travel farther. further. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. How do I ask Google? Is smell gas? <laughs> it is gas. <laughs> that sounds like it sounds like it sounds like you have a really bad headache, and you're trying to like see if something's wrong. Like, is smell gas? <laughs> I'm just gonna go for it's it. It's gonna it auto dial nine one one. Is gas smell? Is gas. smells gas? This is important. Now you look that up. What do you? I mean, you guys both said you don't. I just think back to the days when you go to the gas station that fucking smell like gas, and you went, "I know I shouldn't be sniffing it this, could but be, it smells." It could be good. that they've like science. They've increased the the technology on the pumps itself, so people are okay. spilling less. That could be because it used to be you couldn't go there without fucking getting it all over dribbles. your hand. Yeah. I also yes, it's smell like, is a gas. Of course, it's not yeah. a solid. I do also wonder if like just the technology of actual like gas is like maybe there's some like kind of weird film to where it doesn't release vapors as easily. Yeah. We smell gases because their molecules are free to enter our noses. We smell liquids because some of their molecules enter the gaseous phase after escaping from the liquid surface. Okay, fumes. Solids can also release molecules into a gas phase, albeit slowly, but the usual reasons why we can smell them are that they contain volatile oils or that they are chemically reacting with something from the atmosphere to produce a gas. So what you're smelling is always a gas. Right. We're just saying in the summer more gas is made from the gas because it's hot. Sure. Yeah. I'm just saying that I was right. You're fuming. Um, now, this one might be a little out there, but I need you guys to keep an open The rest mind of these have one. been in there. A little bit? We went the wrong way with daylight savings this time. Because our dog, her internal clock is fucking nutty. And guess what? This little fucker wakes up at 4 a.m. instead of 5 a.m. now. She went back an hour somehow, and when we went forward an hour. So what's going on here? Interesting. Her internal clock should have been waking us up at 6. It, it's waking us up at 4. This has been like one of the few, if not only, times daylight savings happened in the spring, and I get surprised by the sunlight. You know what I mean? Okay. No. Like at night, like the first, like after the first week, I was like, it is fucking 7 p.m. Why is the sun out? And I feel like that never happens in a normal year. I, you're onto something with this. I'm finally onto something. I got Josh on my side. How come I get woken no. up by the sun and I can't fall asleep because of the sun? Because the days are getting longer, Joshua. Mm. That's what happens when winter turns mm. to spring, spring turns to summer. Yeah, the Illuminati would you want you to think that, huh? Erica's posting cringe. Don't post cringe. I can't be a single father raising a child. Erica finally got to get domed. I've domed my wife, Josh. I dome her as much as she wants it. Call me Jeffrey because I dome her? Is that anything? No, no. Is that anything? I mean. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, let me really let me really pontificate on whether or not that was an astute. Final one. I think it was us. astute, yeah. <laughs> Final one. Have these all been Christian originals? Um. No. The last like four have okay. okay. All the make McD- the all of them since McDonald's have okay. been. The one where you like question it, it made me get a little panic that I didn't pick good enough one, so I had to I had to pivot to mine. <laughs> Final one though, fire hydrants aren't connected to any water lines. They just exist to make cities more money off of parking tickets. That now hang on that, I like that. No. When's the last time you seen a fire hydrant get used in front of your house? 
Hmm. We don't have one in front of our house. You're, yeah, down the block. It's because it's, it's not illegal. To, it's because it's not illegal to park there. Yeah, we have designated parking in front of our house, and also we have a driveway. Rich. Okay, so I'm. I don't think you're disproving this argument at all. It's definitely more of a city thing, right? Yeah. No. Do you tell me they need that much water for what? For what? Putting out fires. What do you mean? What fires? When's the last time you've seen a fire? When's the last time you've seen a fire? Across the street from our house. I didn't see it. Honestly, I didn't see it either. Hmm. It, also, it did happen at like two o'clock in the morning. Fires can't come out at night. Fires don't happen at night. It's like thunderstorms, hmm. but opposite. Yeah. Is this a reference to your live stream the other day? Thunderstorms Maybe only happen there. at night. Fires only happen during the day. It's true. When's the last time you seen a thunderstorm in the middle of the day? Uh, probably last summer. When I met you in the summer. You gotta listen to some it sound. Do you have a career in do you music? Have a career in music? I do. Holy fuck. What the fuck? What the fuck? fuck? <laughs> What would be my like stage name? Sweet Ricky? Ooh. No, cuz I feel like that I feel like Sweet Ricky would imply like country singer. No, I was thinking more like What covers? genre? I don't I, I was going to say soul. Like Sweet Sweet Ricky sounds like a soul name maybe. Okay. I can't fucking sing soul music. You can't sing. I can Shut sing. Shut the fuck up. You don't know how good my wife can sing. She sings as much as she wants. Yeah. And then I dome her, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give it a rest. I don't know what that means. Let's yeah. give it a... It's a very, singing uh, term? It's a very long reach for a musical term, yeah. Hmm. And now we're on this special part of the podcast where we play a listener-submitted sound. I did not appreciate that. Was that you, Erica? That sound came from Kim. Was that you? Your sister? I'll never tell. Was that Kimmy? No. And you know that listener submitted sound always is followed was there a by note with the sound. Yeah, was there any explanation? Oh my god, let <laughs> me get to it. It's followed by a listener submitted story. Oh my god. That comes from the same person that submitted the sound. <laughs> Hi, judges. Hello. Hello. First off, I love you. Mwah. But offbeat. I've been listening since the mid 50s. Uh, and you keep oh, me. Number of episodes. Yeah. It's like, hang on. <laughs> and you keep me company on repeat throughout the day. I am in need of your wise judgment. I'm, I'm especially to curious to hear Erica's take as a picky eater. Who mm. notoriously digs in when Josh and Chrissy try to get her to try something that she doesn't want to. So Kim wants to know, am I the I asshole? feel like you shouldn't have used digs in in that. Sorry, Agreed. Kim. Because it makes it seem like you were digging into the food. Correct. But you're digging your heels in. Yeah. Right. Sorry, Kim. Digging into the two of you, calling you dumb, stupid, magnificent idiots. Okay. You, you really pulled it together at the end there. I thought my feelings were going to be hurt. Do you want me to hurt your feelings? You do that enough. <laughs> you steal all of his bits. You fucking chomp on his bits all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Am I the asshole for trying to control what my partner eats? Ooh. Sounds bad. My partner is a very picky eater. Think chicken nuggets, peanut butter and jelly, and other traditionally white foods. That's fine. Minus fruits and vegetables. Oh, I mean, um, jelly's a fruit. It's giving neurodivergent. I'm biracial and will eat almost anything. I do all the shopping and food prep. I gotta see so bad. I'm gonna make it through. Don't worry, guys. Including paying for some... Elephant. <laughs> Ew, you didn't even cover your mouth. I hope that wasn't on <sighs> camera. That'll be so Judging embarrassing. Judging you. Editor. Put it on camera. Make sure you zoom in on those big dumb stupid no, 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 magnificent no. I know things hygiene pro po i know hygiene policies i normally sneeze into the crook of my elbow editor i usually do all the <laughs> shopping and food prep including paying for this for stuff but that it's a different issue altogether mm. i'm also a very good cook and make a variety of cuisines 
Lean. Nothing weird. Otherwise. Kid. <laughs> Those are the two cuisines, leaning kid. <laughs> When's the last time we had a kid cuisine? Uh, when Never. I was a child. A kid. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I don't normally cook anything <laughs> weird to outside cultures or explicitly with things that he hates. If I make something that doesn't suit his taste exactly, he'll eat half of the serving that night. Uh, that I make it to not be blatantly disrespectful and then run through all the snacks in the house and not touch any of the leftovers. Yet every day he asks me what's for dinner. He's never rude about this if we're guests somewhere and he always finds something to eat if we go to a restaurant that isn't just a burger joint. But this is very frustrating to constantly feel responsible for all the food at home. I told him multiple times that if he doesn't like what's being served that he has to figure out his own situation. It sounds like you're getting way too defensive about it, right? That's kind of what I was thinking. Like He's not voicing any opinions that he doesn't like it. But I also feel like him refusing leftovers and eating snacks or other items are that are not meant for... I feel like him refusing leftovers and eating snacks or other items that are meant for other purposes wastes my time and money. So she's you're up, Kim is upset that he's eating snacks as a meal replacement and not as snacks. Yeah. Which is a meal replacement. Hmm. The part where I may be the asshole is I'm increasingly considering just not having any alter- alternatives available or anything uh, that he likes in the house, even if I like it too. Why? Just so that Why? he has to either eat what's available or figure out something else. Kim, what are you doing? I feel I, like that would make you the asshole for sure. Yeah. I suppose the loophole in this is that he'll just frequently door dash and then he'll then I'll be annoyed by that too. Would I be a dick if I do this? Yes. Do I have any recourse or do I just let him do what he do what he's going to do? Kim, hope to hear your thoughts. Hmm. And also here's a pterodactyl noise that comes out of me sometimes involuntarily when I'm overwhelmed. Sincerely, you're frustrated, chef. Kim. Kim, I'm confused. Confused, if you won't. Because you're saying that you're both frustrated that you, quote unquote, have to cook everything for him and like do all the grocery shopping. But you're also frustrated that he's eating the food, but also the other food that you purchase. Like, but you're like threatening by like removing. You feel insecure. It sounds like you feel insecure that he doesn't like your cooking, but he's eating it. I don't understand. I don't, I don't think it's a. Uh, insecurity thing i think it's to me it's sounding more like especially with the doordash comment it feels like sh- she almost feels like she's wasting money like she's, ah. I, she's all she, i think she's frustrated that she's in charge of like deciding the dinner every night and then be like well you didn't want this why did i make this mm. and then also being like and why am i spending all this money on snacks if you're not even going to eat them as snacks you're just eating them as food they're too expensive to be a food replacement snacks are cheap not compared to like base ingredients but then like but like wouldn't kim then have her husband her boyfriend do they say i think it's boyfriend uh wouldn't kim have the boyfriend's leftovers so instead of snacks so like yeah i don't know the way i look at groceries is like you're buying like a x amount of calories and then that just gets you through to the next week regardless of how those calories are consumed in what order yeah so i just don't understand why you're being so aggro about it yeah this Sounds like a classic judge's moment of I communicate. Think you need to communicate yeah. what's going on here. Ask him meals that he likes. Yeah, like, has that happened? I I feel like this happens in relationships where it's like it's like a micro resentment that just builds. That's what it feels mm. like unnecessarily. Yeah. So it's like you're getting frustrated, but it's like you're. I don't think she's directly frustrated, like at her partner, but it's like something's got to change here. So yeah. you got to communicate what's going sure. on. Sure. Try using. Offer code judge 60 yeah, at HelloFresh.com. And then you can point through and look at, you don't even, you know, you don't even have to freaking purchase anything. Go look at recipes and see if you like them and just recreate them or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. like, they've I got fe- some really good. If you want him to be involved, then get him involved. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it, it's, it is giving like a little bit of like the neurodivergent because like Aurora fucking hates leftovers after it hits like a 24 hour mark. I think, Christian, you're the same way. Yeah, I got like a weird window on leftovers. So like some people just don't eat leftovers and you shouldn't feel offended by that. 
And like he's eating your food. I don't know. I feel like this That's is... That's what I was going to say. It does sound like he's uh, trying it. Yeah. You know, he's going outside of his comfort zone sometimes and trying the food that you're cooking for him. Um, I mean, and I don't... It doesn't sound like he's being disrespectful about not liking it. Yeah. It seems like everything's getting overblown for... It's, it's going to end up being a bigger deal than it is because... Yeah. That's what's going to come from this if you don't talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes I'll eat. I'll eat frustrated. Aurora will make a beautiful, wonderful dish. Brilliant, magnificent, wonderful bulgogi sauce on a massively braised pork. I don't like bulgogi sauce. Oh, it fucking hits hard. And then I'll eat a fucking bag of veggie straws afterwards because Daddy needs a little bit more sustenance. Yeah. Sue me. If I could see you over that, <laughs> I think I would. <laughs> I don't know. I think you're getting too like offended. I don't think it's a money thing. Maybe I Maybe. just we got different brains here, Christian. This is like White Lotus season two. We're getting what we want out of it. I I don't I don't. Maybe Kim, it is a money thing for you, or you're upset. But I feel like it. She's taking it personally that she doesn't. He doesn't like her cooking. Maybe because Which I could understand. I yeah. guess. I mean, if, if that's all you have to offer in a relationship, in this instance, Kim, that's all she has to offer. We're talking about don't, your sister, right? Nobody's saying that. Don't Christian's sister. Don't you, don't you fucking say that. <laughs> Actually, her husband's more of the cook in the family. He's a does really your, good cook. Does Kim take after your mom in that regard? No, I, I think know. Kim does cook good food, but Kevin is the more. He's like really good. He's, he's a really, really good at really cooking. I really hate the, the double K name. Yeah. Sorry, Kim mm-hmm. and Kevin. Yeah, they're my siblings. That's kind of fucked. I just realized all of your... All of your siblings' names have like the C or the K noise in the front. No. Yeah. Yeah. Brad. <laughs> Crad. Patrick. Cratrick. <laughs> Crim Christian. <laughs> Crim and Christian. <laughs> Am I the asshole for wanting to drive the family instead of my wife? Okay. Since we were married, my wife has always wanted to drive when we go to places together. Interesting. She originally said she got car sick, so I went with it for a long time, even though it made me feel uncomfortable. Why? Your fragile masculinity can't let a woman drive? Every relationship has a driver. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And I I much prefer to be a passenger princess. Yeah. I'm a driver, but Aurora's brother is a passenger princess. So it's fine. Yeah. yeah. I think it, a lot of it just comes down to like, do you have anxiety from driving? <laughs> Yeah. Well, and to be fair too, Aurora recently drove me, and I don't get car sick, but in Aurora's car when she drove me, like just recently, I like got car sick, and she said that, um, like when she's given rides to like her dad or whatever in her car, he also says that. So it might be something with her car, but yeah. Were I'm, you reading fucking Twitter? No, I don't go on my phone when I'm with my girlfriend. I'm 100 percent locked in on our relationship. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because that's usually what causes the car sickness. No, I know that. Like looking down or reading or whatever. But no. Uh, It's been bothering me more and more lately. Especially when we're at social events and everyone's leaving and I'm there sitting in the passenger seat, waving bye to everyone, getting into their cars, feeling like a child. I brought it up in a marriage counseling session recently. (laughs) Uh, And our counselor recommended that she give me a chance driving. She wasn't happy at all, but agreed to try it out. Every time I've driven now, she began... Every every time I've driven now, she's been extremely bitter. She'll sit in the passenger seat, stewing away angrily. That's what you've been doing. (laughs) One word response is very cold. She mentioned that this is the one thing that I can control, and now I don't have that. Ah. Funny enough, Talk about that in marriage she counseling. didn't mention car sickness at all. It's been five or six times now that we've done this. Each time I bring it up and she gets pissed off. She won't refuse, but she will be miserable. I'm not going to lie. My reasoning for wanting to drive is that I believe that husbands should. It's embarrassing for me when others see me sitting in the passenger seat being driven by my wife. Grow It's up. emasculating. Oh when I start God. driving my daughter, even... Uh, when I started driving, my daughter even asked me why I was driving. When I responded, daddy drives too, she responded, but you don't. Oh. Her reasoning is that she gets car sickness, but hasn't complained about it once being in the passenger seat. 
and that she loses some sort of control from this. She has stated that she hates that our counselor gave this suggestion to us. But I want to know, am I the asshole for yeah. wanting to be the driver when we go places as a family? You guys both have control issues. Or it, should I just let her drive and deal with it, even though it makes me feel uncomfy and a bit disrespected as a husband? You're not the asshole for wanting to drive. That's fine. It's the reasoning behind why you want to drive. The fact that you think that it's emasculating. Yeah. Yeah. Like, fucking grow up. It is we, It is 2023 quit it just stop yeah they both clearly have like control issues in this one regard but like his reasoning of being like i don't want to be seen as less of a man doesn't make any sense her reasoning of this is the one thing i can control in my life seem a little at odds and maybe yeah. that should be explored both of those things should be explored both independently and in your own marriage counseling but that was so well worded joshua and i was just like fuck off <laughs> that's the dynamic we bring here erica's yeah. emotional and i'm logical and I'm grumpy. <laughs> and Erica is political. Um, never. Never once. Yeah. I mean, I get it. Like, <clears throat> as a man, uh, I I get, like, the idea of feeling emasculated by, like, certain things. And it, and for me, sometimes it it's, depends on the group I'm in front of. Right? Like, if, if I'm just, like, hopping in the car with Christian, I wouldn't feel emasculated. But, like, if I'm... If I'm uh, in front of like uh, maybe like grandparents or like older people, I'll be like, well, no, I'll drive. You know what I mean? Like that kind no. of thing. And I, I get it. Again, it, I would never let that like cause a fucking issue. You know what I mean? But like it, the gender stuff is so ingrained in people. Sure. And it, you got to work through it and make it not. The issue shouldn't be like, I'm a man, I drive. Yeah. Agreed. You know I mean? Yeah. You got to work through it. Mm -hmm. Also, what if you're a bad driver? Yeah, that's the what other What if thing. your wife is just trying to save your feelings, be like, I just need to do this? Yeah. Because a lot of men, you know, men get in all accidents more than women do, so. A lot of men are bad drivers. They're aggressive. They get aggressive and they start. So it sounds like you get into an accident. Yeah. That's what mine sounded like. Erica, I was I was listening to this new podcast. It's called The Judges. Uh, hmm. I think it was episode nine. You guys told the story about George shitting all over you in the car when you first uh, got him. Was that the car you crashed or the car after the one you got after you crashed? The one I got after I crashed. Okay. Yeah. I was like, I couldn't remember the time frame of when you got that car. Because mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. And then Erica crashed that car. And we was like, what? I was like, yeah. And then it was like, I was, just like, I was like, I know it was in the winter. Mm -hmm. but then Rory was like, well, that meant what happened when we were dating. I was like, then I guess it happened before that. Yeah. I wrecked my car. In January of 2018. It was that long ago? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 2018? Mm -hmm. Man, the pandemic really, really goofed up your time really span. Up my time span. Mm -hmm. And your pronunciation of things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. No injuries, though. And nope. you were going like 70. I was going like 85. Shut the fuck up. While it was icy. We're going to get a ticket still. They can backdate the ticket. Can they? Because no. I, I definitely know. told that cop I was going 60. Yeah. And then he still yelled at me that that was too fast. And then you hit a patch of ice. You spun out, hit a guardrail thingy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Multiple times. Mm -hmm. Airbags didn't go off. I think we could have sued. We probably could have been rolling in it right now. Mm -hmm. It was the whole thing. But I'm fine. My car wasn't. The engine got sliced in half. How old was that car? Uh, it was old. I think it was a 2010. Yeah, you had it for a while. Or 2007, maybe? I think it was a 2007. I think it was an 07. Chrysler Sebring. It fucking sucked. It was the worst car we've ever had. You crashed it? Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> when did that happen? What? And then I got a Chevy Cruze, and it was great. I really liked that car. Right. And then we got the frick out of here. Frick out of Dodge. Do we want to plug anything? Do they? We got it figured out? Hey, listeners, hey, you got it figured out? Go on Twitter, Instagram. Twitch. Patreon. YouTube. No, not Twitch on this case. YouTube. Friend request from Josh and Joe. You fucker. At FRJJPod. Get frigid with it. That sucked. What? No, I also it's hated cool. that. It's cool. It's awesome. No. No, it's, it's Come so and get frigid. No. Cool. On friend request from Josh and it's Joe. so cool. Also bad. Fridge pod. Same places, but judges pod. But does, can we all agree fridge pod is cool? Fridge pod is cool. Frigid? Forget about it. Na 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 na. 
Nah, nah, uh, nah, 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 nah. Getting fridgy with it. The judges. Love you. Mwah. Hugs gotta and, count. Hugs and pisses. <laughs> Come and count one more time. Today. Hugs and fridges. Have a great week. And the judges love you.